When someone asks me what the best value telescope is for someone who's just getting into astronomy, one of the options that I often recommend is the Skywatcher Heritage 130P. That is this little guy over here. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's on a Dobsonian mount, which is a very, very simple design. So it moves in azimuth or horizontally and in altitude, so vertically, which makes it very, very simple to use. It's also extremely compact, so uh, it closes down to uh, a little over a foot long, so it's very easy to transport. You can take it out to a dark site, you can take it hiking, and it doesn't take up much space in your car if you have a small car, uh, unlike some of the larger telescopes. One of the other things that I really like about this uh, telescope is that it has a built-in carry handle on the mount, which makes it really easy to transport. So optically, uh, this scope does have a parabolic mirror and the mirror has a focal length of 650 millimeters and a diameter of 130 millimeters or about five inches. So it does have enough aperture to be able to collect a significant amount of light and give you some pretty decent views of the night sky. So I tested the scope out for an extended period of time from my backyard as well as from a dark sky location. It gives excellent views of the moon. They are sharp. You can see a lot of detail in the craters. You can see the mountains on the moon. And it also gives pretty good views of planets such as Jupiter, where you can see the equatorial cloud belts, as well as the four Galilean moons around it. And it shows the rings around the planet Saturn without any trouble. It's also quite good at uh, wide field views of the brighter deep sky objects although it's not quite as good at splitting double stars for example compared to a four inch refractor or even a good quality three inch refractor the parabolic mirror was nice and sharp however i didn't find it to be quite as sharp as uh, for example an eight inch f6 dobsonian uh, or a refractor so this scope specializes in wide field views of larger, brighter deep sky objects and the moon and some of the larger planets. Now, overall, I found this telescope to be quite well built. Uh, mechanically, uh, the only real complaint I have about it is the focuser. Now, the focuser on this telescope does wobble a little bit uh, out of the box, but to correct that issue, you can apply a little bit of Teflon tape such as uh, this one over here to the threads. So just unscrew the entire focuser, apply the Teflon tape to the threads and screw it back in. And that significantly reduces the wobble in the focuser and allows you to uh, focus more precisely with any eyepiece that you choose to use with it. Now, Skywatcher does include two basic eyepieces uh, with this telescope. However, I prefer to upgrade the eyepieces as the first upgrade for pretty much any telescope that I get. And I had a couple of other eyepieces already, so I don't tend to use the included eyepieces uh, very much. Now, it has a red dot finder on it, which is very, very useful. I personally love red dot finders, uh, even compared to an actual finder scope. And uh, the finder included is, is quite well built. It's made of heavy duty plastic, so I have no complaints about that. And um, you can turn it on and off using this, uh, this rotating knob on the side. And using the knob at the front and the knob at the bottom, you can adjust where that red dot inside is pointing. Uh, so I always recommend aligning the red dot finder to your scope's main optics as the first thing you do and that's something that can be done during the day as well so you're not fumbling around with that at night trying to uh, trying to get that lined up now the mount itself um, you can uh, you can actually undo this uh, knob and take the uh, the optical tube out of the mount so it can be used to mount other light duty telescopes as well such as an 80 millimeter refractor or if you have a smaller Mac cast, those can also be attached to this mount. Although I wouldn't recommend putting anything very heavy on this mount as this is supposed to be a portable setup and the mount can't handle much more than uh, the weight of the included telescope. So overall, uh, the motions in the altitude and azimuth uh, axis are very smooth. No complaints about that there. The scope itself is fully manual, so it doesn't have any tracking. However, that allows Skywatcher to keep the price of it down. 
Uh, it costs about $300 US or about $370 Canadian. Now I noticed recently the Skywatcher did come out with a newer version of this scope, which is the, uh, the GTI version. It looks very similar to the Heritage version. However, it has built-in tracking and go-to. So you connect that over Wi-Fi to your smartphone and that allows you to select objects and the scope automatically goes to them and then tracks them. So that, uh, that model costs about 60% more than this particular one. So whether or not it's worth it is up to you. Um, I think it would be worth it uh, if you don't mind the, the added weight. Uh, but I find that the fully manual one is easier to use uh, for someone who knows how to find some of the objects in the sky. And it's a pretty wide field telescope anyway with a 650 millimeter focal length. So it's usually not hard to find things in the sky. For someone who is using this as their only telescope, I think it might be worth it for somebody like me who has multiple telescopes and is primarily using this as a uh, as a portable telescope to take along with me on trips or to take along camping and someone who knows how to find objects in the sky or someone who likes the challenge of finding things by themselves then in that case this fully manual one might be the better option or if you're on a budget and trying to save money then Yes, for quite a bit cheaper, you can get this version. If you're wondering if this telescope can be used for astrophotography, well, because it's on a manual mount and it doesn't track, it's not exactly suited for astrophotography. However, if you use an adapter such as this one, you would be able to take some pictures of the moon and maybe the planets. But that's as far as I would recommend going with this one. Even with tracking, an Altaz mount such as this is not really suitable for astrophotography. I generally recommend an equatorial mount if that's your primary interest. However, I'm a big believer in using whatever equipment you have to the fullest extent possible. And I must admit, I definitely tried some astrophotography with this as well in the beginning. So, um, yeah, if you have one of these telescopes, I would definitely recommend trying to take some pictures of the moon. So if you own one of these telescopes, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found this review helpful, consider liking and subscribing. And as always, clear skies.